just translate uh, completed. And then there's one other event. Get languages for translate completed. You might recall me saying that you need to have an app ID whenever you're making calls. I'm going to put an empty string in here for now because I don't want to share what my app ID is. But just understand if you're writing this yourself, you need to put your own app ID within there. So also within the uh, constructor, I want to go ahead and make a call so that it loads all the languages that are available for translation. And when that call completes, I'll be able to um, copy those available languages to my available language list property. And whenever a translation is completed, I want to go ahead and copy that translation to the translated Oops, looks like I may be missing something. Ah, translator phrase. Ah, edit the wrong event handler. Let me erase this. Or actually, I'll leave it there. I'm not going to call this, so I'm okay with just leaving that there. Um, the only other thing that's left is we need to provide a method that the user interface can call to go ahead and translate something. So translate a sync, and of course it needs the app ID, the phrase that we're translating, the phrase that we're translating from, I'm sorry, the original language, and then the translated language. And that's it. I'm done with the view model. So now to go back to the view, I need to add some bindings on here. Okay, so the available language list will contain a list of all of the languages that a person can use for translation. And there's more than one place in which I need to use this, so I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, to the other place. Um, now, whenever they select a language, I'm going to store this within translated language. So for the original one, bind it to the original language. And for the, the phrase to be translated, that text box is going to be bound to original phrase. And then you might have been able to guess that I'm binding the translated text box to the translated phrase property. Actually, I think I'll go ahead and make this a read-only text box. So let's go to the code behind. 
um, within my constructor, I actually need to add a uh, view model, add an instance of the view model here. Initialize it within the constructor. Set the data context equal to this so that the bindings will work. And then I'll call the translate method within this buttons event handler. Uh, and that should be it. I think this is pretty much done. Let's see if it compiles. Yes, it does compile, and so all that's left is to run it. I need to add the bindings to the UI elements um, so that they'll show the respective values from the view model. So I'll start off with binding to the combo boxes, which are showing the list of which are showing the languages that someone can translate from and translate to. And I can set the items that show up in here by binding to the item source property. Uh, when someone selects an item from here, I'll bind to the selected item and have that to set, at least for the first combo box, have that to set to trans or the original language. I also want to change the foreground color on this combo box, because otherwise it tends to show light text and a light background and it's almost impossible to read it. I think black should be a good color. Now the second combo box is going to have pretty much the same things that it just displayed here uh, with a few minor differences. Well, actually there's only one minor difference. Um, and that's the field to which it's being bound. Instead of binding to original language, I want to bind it to translated language. So I, was, so I just copied and pasted and made the change. Now the first text box that's on here the text for it needs to be bound to the um, original phrase. I just realized I forgot something. I just set the binding mode to two-way. second text box which is going to contain a translated text. Um, I want to go ahead and set this to read only because the user will not be changing it. I will bind its text to the translated phrase item. I am almost done. One last thing to do is to add an event handler for this button so that when someone clicks on it it will call the translate method on the view model. So that's it. It's done. The only thing that's left is to run it. So let's see, English, Arabic, Okay, I forgot I had set a breakpoint. Just get past that. And there's the translated uh, translation for good morning in what I believe to be Arabic. Let me turn this breakpoint off. Now, one of the things that I don't like about the emulator is it doesn't seem to have a full character set lo uh, loaded. So when I try to do Chinese, I just get a whole lot of square box back, and that's because it does not have the proper um, characters loaded for showing that. If I try German, that'll come through. Uh, and it just seems to have the Arabic and then several other... It seems to have the Arabic and then several other Latin uh, characters loaded. And so that's it. So you can see I was able to make a translation program in about 10 minutes of construction time plus the time that I spent demonstrating it and uh, talking about it. So you'll be able to find the source code for this program on my website at j2i.net.